Hi everyone, I'm with the chief engineer of the new 2024 GX550. Very exciting, it's a very capable vehicle. But today I just want to focus on talking about its off-road capability and why they have to focus so much on converting the GX460 from a luxury cruiser to what is now a truly off-road capable SUV. So I'm going to talk to the chief engineer in Japanese, translate it back to English and so forth, and give you a little bit better feel for why this thing is truly a great off-roader. So first thing he wanted to point out is the fact that uh, the approach angle and also the departure angle have been uh, changed for the overtrail model, especially to allow it to tackle some difficult terrain. So for example, this piece right here is different on the overtrail compared to other GX550. Uh, it's cut a little bit more uh, abruptly so that it can give you maximum approach angle, but also this thing itself, the piece of plastic here, if you damage it from, from overlanding, then this can be replaced just by itself. And you don't have to replace the entire uh, piece of the bumper here. Uh, just also, there's a lot, lot less overhang in front of the tires, uh, so that this whole thing is shorter, easier to maneuver uh, when you're off-roading. Another important uh, design change from the old GX, the new one, is to increase the visibility so that it's easier to um, go off-roading. So for example, the belt line for this new model has been lowered quite a bit. Very noticeable when you're driving this vehicle. Uh, that allows for maximum visibility to the sides, both left and right side. But also the mirror itself has changed in terms of design. It's more uh, vertical or portrait design now instead of horizontal in shape. In fact, it, it is 30 millimeter uh, uh, less wide, narrower I should say and then a 30 millimeter longer this way. So it's kind of a, a long a mirror so that you can maybe drive through the off-roading area without hitting trees or bushes just because the entire mirror is not sticking out as much. And the position of a mirror is such that it is now located on the door versus on the A-pillar or on this corner here, allowing for visibility to happen right through between the A-pillar and the mirror, allowing you to see what's coming ahead. And that's something that was not on the previous GX. Now in terms of interior, what's interesting is that they want to make sure that you can tell what condition the car is in, in terms of the levelness. So even though you can look at the actual infotainment system and tells you what angle you are, uh, what they want to do is be able to focus on driving. So this line here on top of the dash panel is actually straight across the board right through and it's very rectangular. So when you're driving and your uh, SUV is going off on different angles, and as, a, as the vehicle shifts back and forth, you can tell the location of the vehicle respect to the road ahead, because again, you can use this as a sort of like a reference line. And that allows for um, easier driving on off-road to be able to focus on it. And that's one of the things that uh, for him anyway, it's important because now you can drive based on intuition as well and not rely on electronics. Another important aspect of the design is this entire center console. You have the mode select, which includes the driving mode, the MTS and crawl control. You also have the high and low, as well as locking center differential and locking a rear differential. So all this capability is important, but at the same time, the location of all these components and the switches are close to the driver's side and it's also easy to see. So when you're driving, you can just look down and focus on it. And they were able to design this with some um, help from other pro drivers who are uh, experiencing off-roading or rallying, and they have helped them to provide the right location for all the switches. Uh, also keep in mind that uh, the seat design is different for over trail and what they've done is to make it more stable so the the rear part of the seat uh, toward the back of the seat I should say uh, is a little bit firmer than the rest of the seat to give you that stability also in terms of seat design the side bolsters here are actually a little bit softer than in other models because when you're going off-roading you don't want these to be too firm because if it's holding your body too much your actual head will then move around too much so by making these side bolts a little bit softer it will accommodate you and your body can shift a little bit and therefore it's more comfortable and give you the right kind of uh, positioning for uh, off-roading so now i'm in the back of the gx550 once again just like in the front the bumper is designed so that these components can be separately uh, changed around if they get damaged you don't have to replace the whole bumper and so there are actually components 
in terms of design. Also, the design is such that it gives you maximum departure angle because it's cut differently from other models. So that's the design of the rear bumper. And interestingly enough, in terms of the rear tail light, it's placed pretty high up in terms of the rear area here. And that's because if you can put it higher, then it's actually uh, easier for anyone following in convoy, for example, during the off-roading to see it. But also um, kind of prevents any low bushes you happen to be rubbing against it. Won't damage the rear tail light because it's off the ground uh, higher than, let's say, in the conventional other SUVs. So I asked the question also whether there's much of a difference in terms of off-roading capability between Land Cruiser 250 series and the GX550 over trail. And he said fundamentally they're the same because they're a very similar vehicle with uh, uh, almost identical um, powertrain and equipment and so forth. But this one has an electronic KDSS versus a manual engagement and disengagement of a stabilizer bar for Land Cruiser. So this one is easier to control when you're going off-roading. You don't have to figure out whether to engage or disengage your stabilizer bar or change the way the stabilizer work with the vehicle. And that happens automatically behind the scenes, giving you maximum comfort and confidence in driving this during a difficult off-road course. So we want to thank um, Oji-san for all the extra work and the, creating a beautiful vehicle here in Arizona. It's very hot and we both have the hats on. And uh, you know what, we can't, I can't thank him enough for creating such an amazing vehicle, but also to be here to give us some insight. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. <laughs>